Well, we've essentially left off where uh, we're starting off where we left off in the last video, where we have our flattened cube, which is set up to have uh, rounded corners when we subdivide it. So we've hit the tab key, we can see we have the rounded cube in subdivided or subpatch mode. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to show how to essentially cut a hole right through the the, the face of the, the or the top part of the cube. Sub subdividing, you know, subdivision modeling or subpatch modeling is definitely one of the places where if you do a little pre-planning, at least in your head or in your mind, uh, you could save yourself a lot of work down the road. So in, in this case, I'm going to switch to layer two where I have a fully completed model. And I'm just going to show you some of the things we're going to keep an eye out for. So while we go back and actually model it, um, we kind of know the process. And in knowing that, we'll be able to save ourselves a few steps. So I just switched to layer two. I'm going to go into full screen mode, hit the zero key on the numeric pad. And essentially what we have is we have a, a hole going through this flat cube. Um, what I found in my experience that you could cut a hole through different objects using as many or as few sides as you want to use. What I found is if, if you use four sides or less than four sides, many times it doesn't really look like a perfect circle when you subdivide. Um, I think six is usually the least I'd want to use. Um, eight is also a good number. I, I don't think you definitely need to use more than eight, um, although you can if, if it just makes sense from a geometry standpoint. In this case, um, from a functional standpoint, it makes a lot of sense for us to use eight because we're working on a four-sided object and it also has four corners. So things are going to work out for us if we keep in our mind that we're going to go with an eight-sided um, hole going through this object. Uh, the other thing which you'll notice is we're keeping a lot of the same principles as we did when we rounded the edges of this flattened cube. Whereas we have our hole, but we also have loops, control loops that go on either side of this hole um, that help control the rounding of this object. So if, if we go to um, subdivided mode, if we go into enter subpatch mode, hit the tab key, you can see this is a very nicely smoothed cube with a nicely smoothed hole going right through the center of it. And the truth is the, the, the rounding on the edges are all pretty much the same as well. So the way we did that is we, I'm going to go into edge mode, we have uh, control loops on either side of this hole that tell it how sharp we want this corner to be. And we have those edge loops on this face, on the bottom as well, as well as on, on the inside of, of the cut. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump back to layer one, and uh, we could go ahead and, and start to uh, cut this hole through this flattened cube. Um, I'm going to enter the full screen mode again, and uh, we're going to use the, the first cuts we're going to use is uh, gonna, we're going to make essentially make an X through this cube on across the faces. So I'm going to enter the polygonal mode. Select two faces, and I'm going to Bandsaw Pro, which is under the Modify, or under the Multiply and Subdivide uh, palette. And again, this is one where I have in my uh, Shift Control left mouse button. And uh, if you clear it out, if you have a different setting, the default is to have one cut right at the 50% level. And this is actually where we want this cut to be. So we're going to leave everything as it is. We're going to accept that. We're going to deselect our geometry and essentially want the same cut going in the other direction along the x-axis. So I'm going to select two polygons, go to Bandsaw Pro again. Settings are all set up exactly the way we want them. I'm going to accept that and deselect everything. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to connect these corners diagonally through the center point. I know I've heard on the new tech forums that a lot of people don't use the connect um, option too often. Uh, that's one thing when I, especially when I'm subdividing, you know, doing subdivision modeling or subpatch modeling, I, I use the connect tool all the time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to enter the point mode. I'm going to deselect everything in case we had anything selected. And I'm going to select these three points across the top. And uh, I think it's under construct, there it is, under combine, you have the connect tool, which is just the letter L, if you have the shortcut for that. 
Um, so I'm going to hit the L, and you'll see that it puts a new edge connected all the way through. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other direction. I'm going to hit the L key for connect. I'm going to deselect everything. And you can see right off the bat we have all the corners connected and all the flat edges connected as well. I'm going to do the same thing right now on the bottom side. Hit the L key to connect, deselect everything, go in the other direction, hit the L key to connect, and deselect everything. So you may be wondering where is our hole, um, but that's going to come about pretty quickly now. Uh, the other thing with uh, subdivision modeling, as a good rule, it's, it's always a nice thing to keep quads if possible. And right off the bat, you're noticing that we have a lot of uh, triangles, a lot of tries on this. But those very quickly will be turning into quads as we do the next step. So we're going to stay in point mode. And I'm going to select just that middle point at the top face and the bottom point. Now, you can do these separately as well. But if you select them both at the same time, you know the settings will be exactly the same for these, uh, which actually guarantees that the hole will be the same on the top and the bottom. Uh, but you could, these could be done at different times as well if you wanted. So at this point, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use Rounder, uh, which is under the Multiply and under the Extend. Rounder is also one of the tools that I have in my Shift Control menu. So I'm just going to Shift Control and left, left Mouse button, and I have Rounder right there. I use that quite often, so it's pretty convenient for me to have it in there. And in the Numeric pa Palette, we're going to want to just make sure the rounding polygons are set to 1. And the mesh density for it to be, if you want one rounding, it really needs to be set to low. If you have it set to high, it will always um, want to have an even number of, of polys. So make sure this is on low and make sure it's on 1. And we're just going to click once on the, um, on, the, on the dot that we were trying to round. And actually, sometimes when it does this, oh, here it goes, it, it switched to 2 in the rounding polygons. So I'm going to switch it back to 1. And you can see, essentially what this did is it beveled out that point. And I have a tendency to use rounder for almost all of my beveling options. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use rounder to essentially set up the base for this hole. So we're going to change the inset distance, which right now is at, in, in the 700s. And we're going to make this new polygon, this new n-gon, as big or as little as we want this hole to be. So let's say we want it you know, about this size, which is fine. Again, before we accept everything, we could also notice that it's the same for the top and bottom, which is very convenient. <clears throat> now, if, if, we, if we could go back and remember what the completed object looked like, we'll remember that we have to create control loops on either side of the final hole. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make sure a rounder is being set up for our outside control loop. So if we want this hole to be this size, we're going to want to make this polygon a little bit bigger because we're actually going to be making the final hole a little bit smaller. So in, in this case, it doesn't really that matter that much, but it, it matters more for the workflow. So I'm going to accept it at this size <clears throat> and deselect everything. And again, essentially what we have is we have a big n-gon now at the top and bottom. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, the polygon selection mode, select this top n-gon and the bottom n-gon. And then I'm going to use uh, multi-shift, which is another tool which I have in my uh, control shift left mouse button. And it's one that I use on a regular basis. Select multi-shift. And very quickly with multi-shift, we're going to create our control loops for this hole. So the first thing you want to do is you want to right mouse click on the polygon. And that's going to basically set us up for our first inset. And if you go to the inset you know, option on the numeric palette, we're going to drag that drag that in, and I'm going to actually going to, I'm going to exit the um, the full view, 
And if, if you zoom into the, the top view, you can see now that we're insetting from that, en that initial end gone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to inset it so it's a, a vi about the vi same visual distance as our control loops were on the edge. And what this will do is this will help keep the rounding across the whole entire object pretty similar. So that looks pretty good like that. And now we're going to set up our control loop for the inside of the hole. So I'm going to go back to the um, perspective view. I'm going to right click one more time. And essentially this is going to set up the second inset. And this time we're actually we're not going to change the inset, we're going to change the shift amount. And um, we're going to use a negative value because we're going to actually go into the object. And in this case, if you go to the, um, the back or, or left view, I'm going to zoom in. And you can see actually the control loops for the edges on the outside of the, the flat cube that we, did, that we created earlier. I'm going to change the shift amount so it lines up with the edges. Now, you may not have to be that accurate. It's not really that critical that you're that accurate. But again, what that will, what that will create is corners that are rounded all the same amount across the object. So um, because we had the, the top end gun and the bottom end gun selected, it actually did the same exact operation on the top and bottom all in one step. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept that, and I'm going to deselect our polygons just so we could take a look at what we have so far. So right now we have all of those objects around, uh, all those polygons around, which used to be triangles. Now they're actually all quads, which is a good thing for subdivision modeling. And we still have those two big n-gons in the middle, which aren't, it's not a hole, but we're going to turn that into a hole very quickly. So um, we're going to go back and we're going to select those two n-gons. And then essentially we're just going to, we're going we're gonna to bridge these together. Um, I'm just going to try to find the bridge tool somewhere. Actually, the, the bridge tool is another one that I have in my... Uh, shift and control menus, actually my shift control right mouse button menu, and I'm just going to select bridge. We could try to locate it in a second afterwards so we could find it for everyone. But after you select the bridge, you'll notice that it connected those two end guns. And the nice thing is all of our control loops are set up already because we kind of planned ahead. We have the hole. We have um, our control loops that go on the outside of the hole. We have our control loops that go on the inside of the hole, which were created using um, multi-shift. And the same thing applies for the bottom. So now if uh, we hit the A key, fit all views, you can see from the top view, we have a nice eight-sided um, hole, essentially. Um, because we use rounder, it's it's beveled out perfectly. So all the edges are you know same distance, all the same size. If we hit the tab key, you'll see quickly that we have a very nice, very sharp hole right through the center. The edges are nice and smooth. They have the same rounding as the cor or the edges and corners of the outside of the cube. Um, and the other very nice thing about this object is there it's all quads. If you go to the um, polygonal mode, deselect everything. If you go to the polygonal, uh, the polygon statistics palette you could see that we have um, um, all quads. There's, there's, there's no tries at all. There's um, no end guns. And uh, there you go. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. At, once you get to know the, the techniques a little bit better, this will go uh, much, much quicker. If you were looking for the bridge tool before, uh, it is under the construct menu. I actually finally located it. Under the Construct tab, uh, it's in the Combine section. So uh, there's the bridge tool right there, um, right off on the left. I'll be working on a third video. I'm not exactly sure what I'll be putting into that one, uh, but I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you have any feedback, feel free to drop me an email, and uh, stay tuned for uh, the third one coming uh, sometime soon.